This is Greg Tingle reporting for Media Man Australia. We're in the field at the International Boat Show. Sydney International Boat Show. Sydney, Australia to the world. Michelle Lee, we finally got to meet you. We'd, we'd heard about you. You've been on all these shows around the world. Anyway, you're back in Sydney. Um, first of all, well done on your bravery. Like you've accomplished some people would say the impossible. What was the train of events that got, got you to be such a brave, like, see, see, worthy, like, you've done all this stuff? What was the, the first one or two stages where you thought, yeah, I'm going to get on a boat, I'm going to take this boating, godding, all this stuff, like, seriously, instead of just looking about it and hearing about the water? What happened? Uh, so initially for me, I was assessing my life and looking at how traditional life safety was. And I thought to myself, is this how you want to see the rest of your life? And I actually said that it's no. So it meant that I had to create a whole new thing. And I wanted to be adventurous. So, you know, I always say to them what you read because I read a book called Growing the Atlantic. And the next thing you know, not being a rower, I'm not an Olympian, not elite, not an athlete, but I wrote Okay, I've got a bit of a quick, only tell off to you what you're what you're happy to disclose, but I'm you know, trying to trying to dig a bit deeper here. A lot of us have been through big moments in our life, like, you know, could be family stuff or career, and you might go, what am I doing that job for? Or what am I hanging around that type of people? Like, was it something, did you sort of like really turn your life around or was it more of a gradual approach or you just sort of went in the deep end, so to speak, and thought, that's it, I'm going to really get into this Asian sports stuff. Like, how big was the event that got you down this year? Uh, so I went through a, a divorce, uh, 22 years, uh, married, and uh, decided if I'm going to exit here, I need to do something special. Okay, well, so, so it was a, a, then it was just a series of events that, you know, from one thing led to another. It's like moving a can of words. You know, you go into Dakota, next thing you know, you find yourself living on a boat, next thing you know. And these are all, I just wanted to say yes to you. All right, so I'm thinking without knowing, Maybe there was one or more people that said, Michelle, are you sure you want to do it? Like, we know you've done all of this stuff up to this point, but is, is this just a, a moment you're in, or did you sort of know for sure that you wanted to do this, or were you sort of testing the water a little bit before you sort of went in the deep end? Uh, no, I was 100% committed from the moment I had that dream, from inception. You know, like I said, not a rowan, not a leap, not an athlete, not a born adventurer. I had to go on a boat. Uh, I had never known if I even liked rowing. But I liked the idea of what this girl achieved by rowing an ocean. So I threw myself in without hesitation, without any conflict, 100%. I was doing it. So what was the first main um, voyage, if you like, that was more than just sort of just going off a little bit the coast where you were really like doing it, taking it to the next stage, not just a casual person that sort of liked being around the water. What, would, what was the first one or two where you were really doing it seriously, where people have started to look, wow, look, did you see or hear what Michelle just did? Uh, it was the Atlantic. So the okay. Atlantic was our maiden voyage. It was yep. 3,000 miles and that took 68 days. So that was my warm up. And then I did the Pacific, which was uh, 240 days and that was uh, 8,000 miles. So from 3,000 wow. to 8,000. Right, and we're curious, like with many lifestyle endeavours and sometimes with sports and professional athletes and so on, for many years it can be like a labour of love and then sometimes um, the commercial business model or whatever can start to kick in. If you don't mind disclosing <laughs> to us here, was there a point where it started to become, if you want to say, more commercially um, viable or is it sort of commercially sensitive as far as the way the business of being a professional uh, ex explorer or adventurer. Was there a chain of events there where then you really hit it at a professional level? How does that work? Uh, no, I still dream about being a professional adventurer. That's okay. my dream, okay. to be a pro adventurer where you get paid to We've do got that, everybody. Stuff. Yes. So, and my opportunities will come through speaking. So I'm available to hit the speaking circuit. Uh, the corporate dollar, you know, they pay people to come and, and woo and wow their people. I can do that. We can, can, we can see this is a good omen. So I, I've got a few... Friend, not, not about me, but I'm just saying we've been around a few people. TEDx, TEDx talks. We can tell you're very capable, world class speaker. So there's probably one or two brands out there where you could be the ambassador. Maybe safety first, or power of the human spirit, overcoming the odds. It might be a voting product. And here you are. So we know who you are, Michelle Lee, um, world acclaimed ocean adventurer, rower. 
the whole world, we, we know about you now. Is it, okay, um, safety first on the water. Some, some words of wisdom, safety for anyone out there that might even be tempted to sort of do a bit more what you're doing or just people that are spending time around the water. Yeah, so think of your worst case scenario and that's not to be a drama queen. That's so that you can then have strategies and plans in place for that worst case scenario. So I did all of that. I thought of my worst case scenarios. I had redundancy for as much as I possibly could. And then I also had the know-how, how to make shift stuff, only because I built the boat. So I got involved with everything that is boat building. I had the confidence just to give it a crack. So that's my next tip. Just give it your best red hot shot. Do it scared. Well, you've absolutely nailed it today. So, Michelle, thank you very much. Well done on everything you've done. Thank you so much. We're going to get this out to the world. And I guess you'll keep um, entertaining and educating the masses. Thanks, Michelle. Appreciate it. Great to meet you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Simon. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> there we go. We did, see, we didn't have to wait for six. But you know what happens? This is a true story, right? And I'm just saying, over the years, over the last 20 years, we've had that